Hello everyone, Mitch here, and today I wanted to uh, briefly talk about the Emacs application framework, uh, which you should be able to see over here on the GitHub, uh, just github.com slash Emacs, E-A-F, Emacs application framework. Uh, here is what the top of the page looks like, and here is the logo that they use, uh, which looks horrible on a dark background. Uh, but whatever. So basically, if you're if you're not familiar, this is a or this is supposed to be a like graphical embedded front end thing for Emacs stuff. The pitch is like, what if Emacs had a real browser? What if this PDF or video file can be viewed efficiently without leaving Emacs? And that sounds like a very cool idea. Um, and it is a very cool idea. The problem is that this this extension, this app, is kind of busted. Like it usually doesn't work. It's there's a lot of parts that have to come together just right to get it to function, uh, and that doesn't always usually want to happen, um, especially if you have a slightly less than orthodox setup. Uh, but as you can see, it's got all of these integrated apps that it has. The most important one is the browser, because that's like the big thing is that Emacs doesn't have as a browser, even though, you know, it kind of has a couple browsers maybe sometimes. Um, there's also a terminal for some reason, like we can do that. Image, okay, we can do image viewing, we can do music playing with, with like command line background interop and stuff. Um, so I'm not sure why all of these things exist, but some of them are really cool ideas. Like the video, video player is technically possible. You can implement one in like pure Elisp with the with the image drawing capabilities that Emacs has. It's just eh, not the best. Um, or it's it's hard to make it decent past the level of just existing. So the installation instructions are here. Um, it's just a manual installation instructions and it works fine except for when it doesn't. However, we're not going to worry about these installation instructions because what you actually want to do is um, is use a, make this larger here, uh, you want to use something like straight.el or alpaca and you want to I've got a, an article that I wrote about this recently where I include all of my code, but basically um, you give it the, you give it GitHub and the repo and uh, by default these package managers that are Git based will, uh, will take uh, only the elisp files, so you want to just force it to install all of the files and there's this uh, command you have to run as is shown in the, uh, it's complicated. There's basically there's a Python script that downloads all of the uh, downloads and installs all of the dependencies um, that occasionally works sometimes, but um, usually not. And then you have to actually add the uh, app directory because if we um, if we visit, uh, yeah, the uh, here is the directory. I'm just got to open in Dread here. Um, EAF.el is the main file. Um, EAF.py is the Python side. Oh, did I mention? Did I mention the architecture? Okay, so this. No, wait. There we go. So the architecture for this thing is that um, it is actually. What, wait, wait for the image to load here. So it's built in uh, the front end is there, or the uh, the Emacs side is scripted with Elisp and that can call Python. Uh, and the Python can also call JavaScript because it's it does the front it does the connect, interop with Emacs in Elisp because that's pretty much the only way you can and all of the key handling and stuff in Python and then the rendering in JavaScript. 
There is also a way for Alias to call the JavaScript. Basically, it's got this whole Q graphics type deal where uh, key events from Emacs get passed into the Python layer, which then does different things depending on which app is running in the JavaScript layer. Uh, and that is, that is how that works. Uh, which is fine, it's just, you know, there's it's fraught, there's a lot of things that, that have to go right for it to work, and sometimes it doesn't. But today it does, and today I am very excited uh, to announce to the... Let me see if this will actually work. EAF open demo. It doesn't work because I didn't uh, actually load. Basically, if we EAF open browser, it will ask me for a URL, and I can actually just... Um, Let's go to my blog. That seems like a fun idea. And behold, it is opened in the browser, in a browser here at my blog. And if I uh, mouse away from this, you can see the view changes a little bit. And the reason for that is because it saves it as like an image. Um, if I go back here, um, I can't. I'm. I'm trying to scroll right now. I am. I am scrolling with my mouse wheel, and it is not working. That is. That is a a semi problem sometimes. Um, if we try and switch to. This is. This is the other thing. Uh, so we'll just make that window go away, uh, and then if I try and Control X three, that splits the Emacs window, and then I can switch to. Um, say a different buffer, and I'll put that buffer over there and make it a little bit smaller so it's not uh, as like disastrously large. Uh, if we go click over there, no. Basically, I can use the uh, J and K keys to move because I'm on evil mode. I'm not sure whether or not that's specific to evil mode, but it does kind of work sometimes. Now, uh, you're probably wondering, what is the deal with, wait, hang on, what is the deal with this, this, uh, this stuff, with all of this stuff? Well, some of this stuff is, uh, you see, you can, you can see that I have, uh, quite a bit of extra code inside of my, uh, my configuration here. And the reason for that is that on Hyperland, the way that uh, EAF normally draws itself, it can't actually embed the window inside of another window. That only works on like XOR, kind of, as far as I know. The thing is, to get it to work on Hyperland, you can kind of see how the window border here is not normal. Like if I open, um, if I just open another uh, split, you can see my window borders are normally uh, purple like this, but uh, this border is not. And the reason it's not is that uh, these are actually two separate windows there. This window I'm dragging around is the Emacs window, and that other window that's stationary is the uh, EAF window. And EAF window just puts itself on top of the Emacs window, kind of, is what it's doing. except when the Emacs window isn't active, in which case it's actually um, hiding the EAF window and putting an image there. As you can see, it is now an image because I'm not focused on Emacs. We go back to Emacs, it becomes a real window again. Um, I have animations disabled. I should show you my Hyperland uh, configuration, Hyper, uh, hyperland.conf, and then we go to um, EAF. Py. So here is the relevant sections. We want a window rule to float and no animations. And um, I put a border color in here, but it doesn't really work. I probably should change it back to no border. Actually, let's just uh, window rule equals no border title eaf.py and then an asterisk because the title, you can't see it because my bar is on another uh, monitor that I'm not going to show you. But the 
uh, window is actually uh, the title of the window is af.py and then a number, a random number. So we're going to just reload Hyperland and I'm going to it's nice, um, usually these things are a problem but you can actually just go away and it'll remove the window and then come back here and oh dear, oh dear what's this? Um, it seems we have encountered another uh, okay there, boom, no uh, no borders anymore. I go over and I can, oh, interesting. So apparently I'm clicked inside of, um, okay. I was clicked inside of like an iframe there, that was, that was fun. Good fun times. Right, so the config. See this, this window here that I can't move? because it's uh, because it's not focusable. This is a package that I made called Hypop. I did a very short demo of it on this channel like a month ago. Uh, and it is very simply just the Emacs mini buffer in a separate frame that uh, banishes to another Hyperland workspace that, that's invisible when it's not in use. And the nice thing about that is that it means that there is no line below the mode line on the bottom of the frame here of Emacs. So I can just have my little mode line as like the bottom line and then whenever I need to actually do something that uses the mini buffer, boom, comes up right there. And I also have a little another package that makes like a little notification box for just transient messages and that's like underneath behind this window right now. Oh well. I've got a probably just put it on a different spot or find some way of integrating the EAF window better, which is the main problem with this app is that it doesn't integrate well. But thankfully it finally works now. Anyway, what was happening before was when I would pull this guy up, EAF only, or by default, it only cares about the process ID and it gets that from the window manager. But because this, this, um, the sub window here is literally just a uh, it's literally just a, another frame of the same instance of Emacs it has the same process ID so the high pop that sorry the uh, this window was getting was like put off in the middle of the screen because it was trying to orient itself right um, with this other window that doesn't actually matter and so I just had to make a little thing that tells it not to do that um, this is the function let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it a little clearer um, this whole function most of it is uh, is what was there I added a couple lines here um, basically just this line here with the and statement to uh, make sure that the title is not the title of this window here that I made which is a unique string that's a reference to a thing um, with a variable hypop frame name is, uh, is how I set that and uh, so it makes sure when it's getting the uh, the proper window to set it relative to that it does not pick up that window that doesn't matter um, and it actually gets the right one. There should be a better way to do that. I don't know that there is though and I'm not going to submit a bug report because it would be um, too tiring and I kind of think this project is a lost cause. But hey, occasionally when it works it's pretty cool and look I even have If, if we switch the windows around there. I, it even has, uh, has links. I can go to the, I can go to the link and I can go to the thing and we can, uh, go back with my Vim keys. Look, I've got all my, uh, I've got all my old articles that I used to write. I've got this one where I put NeoFetch inside of Emacs and I, like, detailed the process for how I did that and it's pretty cool and if, uh, if I go over here, you can see that it is actually um, a thing that I'm actively using. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's some neat stuff. 
uh, that this browser can do, um, oh dear, and macros work for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, evil mode with it doesn't quite mesh perfectly, but there's a, there's a lot of things that are still broken about it, but for now, it kind of almost works sometimes, and that's pretty cool, and that's all I got to say about that. Uh, my article about EAF is up here as well. I will uh, tease it in the video uh, where I've got all this code as well that you can look at. Link in the description. That's going to be pretty much for me, and I am at